So it's a beautiful day and you've downloaded what looks like a nice PDF. It says it's an application form. Maybe you wanted to fill up some kind of job application, who knows? But if I open it, double click, something strange happens. You see a flash of a command prompt and then it disappears. That can be good, right? That's not what's supposed to happen. So say we investigate, say we go into Virus Total and we try to upload this file because we're scared it might be a piece of malware. So I'm gonna go into my desktop, select the application and look, it's totally undetected. But wait a minute, why does it say cmd.exe instead of application form? CMD of course is Microsoft Command Prompt, the system tool that's used to execute commands and and that is because this, of course, while it looks like a PDF, is actually a shortcut. And if we right click and go into properties, we're going to find something really interesting. Make sure you wait for this. This is going to be fun. As you can see on the target section, we have a very long string of characters. And I'm going to try to copy and paste this whole thing. There's a secret message in here that I'm trying to get to. So I'm going to copy this thing. We're going to open up Notepad. This is um, fun detective stuff. Now, in this new tab, I'm just going to paste the whole thing I'm gonna scroll up there's a lot of text in here but it ends with from base 64 base 64 of course is an encoding technique to take a bunch of characters like this and then convert it into a hidden code that can only be read once it's decoded so we're gonna try to figure out what the message is what the hidden message is here so I'm gonna copy and paste all of this in a base 64 decoding website and we're gonna hit the decode button and very interesting right beautiful poem here according to all known laws of aviation, there is no way a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway. I guess it's a bit of a metaphor for the malware because the PDF should not be able to execute, but this one executes anyway. Now, this, of course, is the beginning of the string and not something that can actually harm your computer because, as you saw, it's just a simple message. And cmd.exe echo simply means that it's going to display this message when you run it. But if we look at the next part of the code, it says start powershell.exe minimized window style hidden. So it's going to open a hidden window in PowerShell and, and then it's going to execute all of this code. And let's try to figure out what this part means. So we're going to go back to the website, going to copy and paste, decode this. And now this is looking like proper computer code. So we can see there's a new object to download a file, save it in a bat file, which is used for automation in Windows. So you can perform any kind of a command prompt task using a bat file. And then it's trying to grab the actual application form.pdf code and start it as a process. And this is likely what is going to do the job of the malware. And all this happens the moment you open the file, because of course, if we go back and look at the properties, you can see that all of this is embedded in the target section and the target location is system 32. So all of this is going to execute from system 32, which is where command prompt and PowerShell are. So it's running natively as admin and doing the dirty work. Now, what looks like a PDF should not be able to execute and install malware on your system, but it does anyway. This is the beauty of Windows. And as we observed, it's not necessarily easy to detect because you're going to have Microsoft tools that are being used to download the actual malware. And a command prompt script like this could very easily also disable Windows Defender. So any further malware that's downloaded afterwards is not going to be detected because your antivirus is going to be disabled. And they can do it in ways where you're not going to be notified. So this is a popular infection technique these days. This is how a lot of info stealers manage to execute successfully and hack people's accounts. And this is no exception. If we look at the actual analysis of this in the um, Malware Bazaar database, which is where I first found it in the wild markets of Malware Bazaar, it's classified as a downloader, but it can of course be used to deliver any kind of malware. Now, once the data is compromised using a technique like this, it's going to end up on the dark web in some form of a stealer log. So for example, if we search for a random email, you can see we've got a lot of leaks that have been reported as infected device on stealer logs. What this means is the malware has executed on a system and it's created a log file, sent it to the hackers, giving all the information about the system, the credentials on it, the saved passwords, and so on. And all of this data is typically delivered via some kind of webhook, maybe using Discord, maybe a Telegram chat, so the hackers, they wake up, they look at their telegram and they're like, boom, we've got a new system that's 
a victim of our malware. And then they can either attempt to take over those accounts themselves. They can go through this data and try to find out, as you can see, we've got some information here like browser logins, Chrome profile, so cookies. They can see if they can extract any interesting information from there. In this case, the Steeler logs are live from Telegram. But yeah, they can basically exploit it themselves or they can simply take all of these chat logs and then sell it on the dark web at a premium. And then that data is now available to any hacker who wants to target a large batch of accounts to try to compromise an individual. This is how a lot of attackers gain access to systems. Now, if you want to monitor your own footprint on the dark web and do a search like this, you can try out Flare, who are very generous in sponsoring our channel. And it's just genuinely a very good platform with a great UI. I mean, this is the easiest way to do this. You don't have to download Tor. You don't have to go into the dark side yourself, but you can simply use the platform to monitor your own exposure and that of your company. So if you're interested, do check them out using the link in description and do like and share this video if you enjoyed it. And of course, thank you so much for watching till the end. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.